If books such as Way Back Home, After Tears and Dog Eat Dog sound familiar, then you must be an avid fan of Nick Mshongo. Well, he has put together his second short story collection project and it's titled Soweto Under the Apricot Tree, a read that will sit the reader under a cool shade of a tree and lays out the many tales on what it's like to live in a township. From funerals, zamazamas, music to MECs and their mistresses, rape and the difference between gassy and suburban life. This book contains a lot of humor as he captures and narrates the vibrancy and true essence of Soweto and its surroundings. He now joins us in studio to tell us more about this offering. Nikum Shlongo, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. Now, one thing that everyone who reads your work says about you is that you're able to capture so beautifully the ordinary stories of ordinary people living in the township. And then you have the element of humor. How do you do it? Uh, I think the secret uh, behind it is that I sit around with people. I get involved with people. Uh, most of the, my friends actually are just ordinary people that you can just simply pass in the township, you know. Uh, so uh, they give me those stories. And also I'm a very good observer of things. Uh, I think also interpreting things. I think, I'm a f uh, you know, also going to vet university to do African literature, I think helped me quite a lot. Yeah. Now, uh, many South Africans who've grown up in the township will uh, resonate to the stories that you share and that are contained in this book. Uh, what are some of the things that are in this book that you would say you personally connect to the most? Uh, I think mostly it's about Avalon. I think where I come from, I come from uh, 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 Shawelo, uh, extension two. So my house is just opposite the Avalon Cemetery. So imagine every day you wake up, there are sirens of, uh, you know, uh, uh, people going to, uh, funeral to the funeral processions yes. and stuff like that. So to such an extent that we, uh, uh, you know, death no longer mean that much of a thing to me, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think those are the kind of things that uh, reason, uh, that make me, uh, you know, write stories in that way. Indeed, I was yeah. going to say that in your book, you talk about stories of death and pain. You talk about exactly what you've just said, that death has simply become a norm, how the cemetery has now become a place to showcase the latest fashion and to catch up on yes. the latest gossip. What do you think um, informs that kind of behavior? Why have we as a people become almost so desensitized to things such as death? Or um, I know somewhere in your book, you, there's a, 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 an incident where you talk about uh, where you were in a plane mm. um, and uh, you know issues of race. Why are we so desensitized as a society to some of the most important themes? I think when it comes, I mean, there are lots of elements of, and factors, of course. But I think one of the things is that uh, if we talk about death, for instance, we have been, uh, you know, been a society that has been living uh, under brutality for quite some time. I mean, apartheid, for instance, has, uh, was one of the uh, main causes of death in the townships. You look in Avalon Cemetery, many people that have been buried there, 1976 group, you wake up in the morning strikes and whatever. So I think those are some of the things that have, uh, you know, made us to be desensitized because also the things that we are experiencing as uh, South Africa, things like HIV and AIDS, which kills people quite a lot, and then uh, also unemployment, you know. So there are lots of different factors that, uh, you know, one can... Uh, observe and they are rich, uh, you know, storytellers like us, mm. you know, to tap into them in order to get more and more, tell the world about how we are living in this part of the world. Yeah. Indeed. Let's talk about your role and association with the Johannesburg um, Review of Books. Yes. I, I'm, a, a, I'm a, a city editor of the uh, Johannesburg Review of Books, which is one of the most important, uh, you know, uh, platforms to tell our stories and the greatest thing about it is that it tells the stories it focuses into South African uh, literature and South African writers uh, in a way that uh, if you look into this uh, the present uh, moment it also involves also uh, into literacy actually in South Africa because we got a lot of uh, uh, you know people not willing that much to read so it, the uh, Johannes Beck review of books it's helping people to read uh, books it gets into the communities it writes it, it promotes stories 
about us and for us so that we are easily, uh, you know, to encourage the nation to read. Because part of the na what, why the nation is not reading is because, uh, you know, we're, all, we're, all, uh, we're still reading all those uh, old kind of uh, books like Shakespeare's and whatever, forgetting that. And we also that, read to yeah, study and not yeah, for exactly. pleasure. Yeah, and forgetting that we got rich stories written by young South African writers, very beautiful stories. Uh, you can talk about Zugi Savanel, you can talk about Spue Mahala, you can talk about Angela Makola, Nozis Tutuzile, uh, Jele, lots of young people coming to tell stories. So I think it's a uh, uh, Johannesburg review of books is helping us to know and locate those books that we would uh, necessarily not find there. Very quickly, there are a couple of um launches that are in the pipeline for Soweto under the apricot tree. Take us through some of those. Yes, yeah, so some of, uh, I think of the, one of the very first one was in Kimberley and it was well attended. I was invited by the Salt Plaki uh, University, Sabata Mukai invited me there and the reception was so great. And then I took it to Harare in Zimbabwe where I was so surprised because the books that I had were sold out within two hours, you know. And then I, uh, I had one in Market Theatre, and then thanks for Market Theatre for giving us the space, because now, uh, you know, uh, a free space to launch the book. And then also we had one in Mainland Park. All these were attended. And then also yesterday, I just come from one in Cape Town. So it was a great success. All of them are great success, and people are loving it. And then uh, next week, uh, on the 17th, we're going to uh, Pulukwane. We're going to dif uh, different schools in Mankwing, you know. And then after that, it will be Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, right. as well as Kenya. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. Nick. I'm so glad that you're getting all this amazing support because it's truly well deserved. Your work is amazing. Thank you so much for making Thank that time for to come it. through. Time. Uh, that's acclaimed writer Nick Mflongo speaking to us about uh, his latest read that tells us all things we need to know about the township life. It's contained in this uh, book right here and it's called uh, Soweto Under the Apricot Tree.